Cool. So what we're going to be talking about is uh, enhancing user experience with rewarded based ad monetization. And I guess I'm start, going to start with the main message of my entire presentation, which is that ad monetization should be looked at and should be optimized exactly like game developers and app developers are optimizing IAPs, which is something that usually doesn't happen, at least from our experience and what we see. And it's something that we feel that once a company decides that ad revenue that comes from, from ads, like I said, is significant, it should be done and can dramatically increase whatever the company is doing in terms of revenue. Um, so I'll start with kind of a slide that talks about changing the focus. What does it mean? A lot of the companies out there, the amount of time and attention and the team around that, that they're putting on building IP funnels and um, offering all kind of different packages to users, they're doing A-B tests just to optimize IAP is usually the main core focus of the company, but not necessarily the main revenue generator for the company. While in many, many cases, at least from our experience, we see that a lot of companies are not putting a lot of effort in, into how they're optimizing ad-based kind of monetization, while it might be the majority of the revenue that they're making, okay? Which not always makes sense, right? It's something that we should at least think about and kind of examine when we're looking at the amount of money that we're making from IAP and from ads or the amount of the, the size of the teams that we have kind of optimizing both. So let's start with looking at how we analyze IAP. And I want to show you guys that it's very, very similar to how we should be optimizing ad revenue or how we should be optimizing our ecosystem around ads. And again, from my experience, it's not always the case, right? It's not always what happens. While <clears throat> it can be as significant, if not even more significant, for many, many, many game developers out there. So when we're analyzing IAP, what are we looking at? We're looking at the number of paying users, right? We all know that the number is around 1% to 3%. That's kind of the, the benchmark if your game is amazing. So it's 5% because you did a really good job and you're probably monetizing the hell out of your app. Um, but that's something that you're looking at, you're monitoring, you're looking at every day, and you're trying to think about how am I increasing that percentage? How am I going from 2% to 2.4%? Because it means a whole lot of money for me as a game developer. Retention rate and churn rate obviously are two key elements. We're looking at IAP and kind of trying to understand how much money we can make from a certain user base, from a certain app. Things that most companies tend to really, really look at and uh, deep dive into it and, and really, really track every little thing that they change in the game, what it does to the retention and churn. Average session duration, super, super important kind of KPI when you're kind of trying to analyze IAP. And my users, uh, are my users uh, using the app daily for two seconds or for 30 minutes? Obviously, there's a big change in terms of how am I going to monetize those users. Um, ARPU, ARPDAO, RPPU, so ARPU is average revenue per user, average revenue per daily active user, and average revenue per paying users, super, super important matrix that we tend to look at. Type of reward, what am I actually selling? Am I selling something relevant? Does the price mode make sense and so on? What are the goods that I'm offering? Do I have a soft currency, hard currency? Do I sell other items as well? Things that we look at in order to enrich our ecosystem. Timing, when am I offering the goods that I'm selling? Am I prompting a message between levels when you're out of gems, out of coins, or when you need that magic booster to finish a page, um, a, a level at a certain game? It's, it has a lot to do with how much or how effective you're monetizing your users. And of course, what everybody does, we're tracking the minnows, dolphins, and whales. We want to kind of segment those users. We want to know who are our whales and put all our love and effort into those who are dolphins and minnows and try to understand what is the situation there. So the message here is when you're trying to optimize with rewarded ads, the KPIs and the matrix that you want to look at are exactly, exactly the same. Okay? The question is, are you actually looking at them? Are you optimizing towards them? Are you even measuring them? And again, from our experience, we see that many of, game, many of the game developers we work with, they're not even tracking this entire kind of section here. They're just putting the ads out there, hoping it's going to do well, but not really looking at it professionally and kind of deep diving into all the matrix. And now let's look at each one. So number of paying users, we call it at our platform, on our mediation platform, we call it ER and UR. ER is engagement rate, 
which means what's the percentage of users that are engaged with ads? Exactly like you're asking yourself, what are the percentage of users that are buying? It's the exact same questions. Usage rate is how many videos they're actually watching, those kind of on average, those users. It can be two, it can be 10, it can be five, depends. Are we actually tracking it? That's the question. Retention rate and churn rate, these are two very, very important matrix that are changing when you're implementing ads. Okay, when you're implementing interstitials, it might affect churn when you're, or retention, depends. When you're implementing rewarded video, you might see a retention rate go off the roof, it depends. If you did a good implementation, it will affect it positively, but are you actually tracking it? You should, because everything that you do on IP, you track it, so why not also track it when you use ads? And that's again the message. Average session duration, we see a huge effect. At least when somebody's using rewarded video, we see that the average session length increase, almost always, right? And again, the question is, are we monitoring? Do we know what's the uplift after we added rewarded video and before? Um, ARP, D, ARP, ARPU, ARPDAO, and ARPDEU. So I explained these two before, but ARPDEU is average revenue per daily engaged user. It means how much money am I making from those engaged users? Exactly like I'm asking myself, how much money am I making from the minnows, dolphins, and whales at IAP? So the exact same thing with um, rewarded ad advertising. Type of reward, probably one of the most crucial things when you're implementing rewarded video. Am I actually giving something that is worth the, a while for the user to watch a video and maybe watch 10 videos? I'm not sure, we see a, a huge impact on the type of reward. Timing, also super crucial, super crucial. When am I offering this type of reward for the user? When can they um, actually use it? And who are the minnows, dolphins, and whales for ads? Are we actually tracking it? Maybe I have a user that is worth $50, $60 in terms of lifetime value for me just from ads. He never made a single purchase. But the question is, do I track it? Do I even have the tools to track it? By the way, there's some t tools that help developers to track it, it's, it's quite a challenge. It's not easy to track it, right? Um, and again, the essence of this slide is just to show you guys that when you think about it, optimizing and analyzing IAP and uh, optimizing and analyzing um, the funnel for reward ad advertising is very, very similar. And I wanna show you some examples and uh, all the rest of the slides are just examples just for you guys to kinda try to think about it. So let's say I have an app that has 1 million DAO. So I did really well. I have a pretty successful app. I have 1 million daily active users that are coming every day and using my apps. So that's the 100% of users. And I have a 40% engagement rate. What it means, it means that 40% of my DAO are coming every day and clicking on a button to see a rewarded video. Okay, sounds a lot. We have apps that it's even 70%. Okay, so that means that I'm generating 400,000 daily engaged users. Why? Because I took in this example a usage rate of six. So out of those 40% of engaged users, they're watching an average of six videos a day, which comes up to 2.4 million impressions pay, per day. Now, I don't know how much money that's gonna make, because many, maybe all your impressions are from tier three countries, from tier two, tier one, um, I don't know, just for the example. But what I do wanna show is, again, are you looking at this? Are you tracking this? Are you asking yourself, my 40% engagement rate, is it above average, is it below average? Maybe I can be on 60%, maybe I'm way above average. Are you asking you yourself those questions? When looking at IAP, I'm sure that you are. You're asking all around, what's your percentage of paying users, and so on and so on. With ads, it's not always the case. Um, another cool example, so app A, app B, just random uh, kind of examples. Both have a traffic driver, a button for a rewarded video that the user can see. Both give you a free bonus or free chips, whatever it is. The publisher chose to kind of grant. But when analyzing, we're looking at the numbers and we see there's a big difference. Again, and again, this is just an example, right? We see that on app A, there is an engagement rate of 53% and usage rate of seven. So this publisher, I can tell you right now, is doing a very good job. Whatever he's doing in terms of the flow, the reward makes a lot of sense for users, and the majority of his users are actually choosing to watch um, videos. While on app B, it's 12 and three. Anyone can think of a reason why would there be a big difference? We'll make it an interactive uh, session. Anyone? 
ideas, why would there be such a big difference? I mean, the same app, they're both, uh, I don't know, slots or whatever game it is. Why would the difference be so big? Well, the button, okay. What else? The amount of reward. I've put him in the crowd to ask that question. Sorry? Sorry? Call to action. All right. So there's many examples. We'll touch and see some of the examples in two seconds. Just some good tips if you are building a funnel for a rewarded video. But we see here that are you asking yourself again, what is the casino subcategory average? And you should, because you can see here, and these are real numbers, by the way, it should be around 31% and around 6. By the way, the market average that we see on our platform is around 26 to 27%, okay, just for all the genres out there. So just by making some small adjustments, just by improving this and moving your data into at least the market average, you can make six times the revenue that you're generating. Okay, just by asking yourself the questions and then taking actions to actually improve the funnel and improve whatever you can improve, and we'll talk about it in two seconds, to reach those matrix. And this is not a small, this is not a small bump, right, in this example. And we have many, many live examples that are not far from this example at all. And we have numerous examples of publishers that we took from making A to making 3X, 4X from what they did before actually optimizing and actually asking the questions. Um, now let's talk about how to improve. So we saw there, I don't know, there's an app with way, way below numbers. How can you actually improve it? Or there's a few things that you can ask yourself. First of all, the placement. Where is the button? Do I need to click seven times to see the button? Is it in the main page? Am I prompting, am I prompting it in the face of the user every two seconds? Okay, it has a lot of effect, right? The reward. Am I giving my users something that is relevant for them? Am I rewarding them something that they can actually go and use in the app? We see in many cases that a lot of the publishers are rewarding things to the users that they don't need. So why would they watch a video? Why would they do anything to earn it? The user flow, okay, where is it integrated in the optimal place? Does the, even, does the user willing to now click on a button and watch a video in the middle of the game? Probably not, right? So you need to find the right place. Um, the traffic driver, so you said call to action. Well, how does the traffic driver look? Is it very clear that I'm going to click on it and I'm going to watch a video? You want to introduce it to the users at least for the first time so it's clear for them to kind of understand what's happening. Another important thing to at least think about or kind of analyze is what happens when I use rewarded video to my IAPs. Is it improving them? Is it cannibal cannibalizing them? Is it harming them? So we need to look at it and ask ourselves those questions, not just be, uh, you know, just put it in and hope for the best. And I want to show you a cool example from EA, which is one of our biggest publishers that are using us across um, all their titles. So we see a very, very interesting thing, okay? When they introduced rewarded video, video, they saw that users that are actually engaged with rewarded video are more likely to become paying users, okay? When you think about it, all of a sudden, rewarded video is not just another monetization engine. It's actually part of the user experience. It's something that you can onboard users to become a paying user. Okay, which is probably one of the biggest things when I think about rewarded video in terms of what does it benefit me as a publisher. It's not only revenue, it's the entire ecosystem, it's the user experience, it's what it does for the entire ecosystem. And you can see here um, why, by the way, why does it help? Because users get a sample of the free goods, they get a sample of jams, they can now use it, they can now spend more time in the game, they can reach a higher level in the game, and then they're more hooked on your game. Um, they're happy returning users and they're more engaged users and we can talk about it for a very long time about why it helps. But this is just a cool example. Another important thing that a lot of the publishers tend to forget is users in level 1 are not users in level 150. It's not the same users, maybe in many cases, not always, by the way, some, in some games uh, the, the user value is almost the, the same, at least in terms of the reward. But maybe you should give users on day one a different reward from users than in day, I don't know, 7, 30, 90, right? Not everyone does it. This means being quite sophisticated with the way you implement ads, and it's probably the right and most professional way to look at ads, exactly again like most publishers do with IAP. They're not offering the same packages to all users, in some cases, not always. So we, we have here a cool example from a not Doppler. They make a game called Earn to Die. It's a pretty big game. 
and they kind of implemented a smart re uh, rewarding mechanism that, that matches the in-game economy, okay? So a user in level two does not earn the same amount of coins than he does from a, a user in level 30. Uh, again, results were amazing. We saw that we're able to increase engagement rate from 25% to around 38%. Um, engagement rent, uh, rate is above average, if you remember what I told you before. And of course, also something interesting that user rate also increased from 4.5 to 6. So users are not only more engaged, but they're also watching more and more videos. Okay, so again, another cool example and a cool tool that when you compare it to IAP, it feels very natural because when we're dealing with IAP, we always think about it. We don't treat all users the same. Let's do the same with ads. Uh, last example, placements. Many, many cases we see that publishers, when they start using rewarded video, they're not thinking about it too much in terms of what am I going to reward and what are going to be the placements. Okay? You can do multiple placements. Our platform allows you to do as many placements as you want. You can earn, you can uh, reward, I'm sorry, gems, coins, an item, whatever you want, and A-B test it and see how it works. Um, and here's a good example for a 5AMP. They have an app. They, they basically wanted to use more placements and kind of reward different things. And again, results were really, really amazing in terms of their ARB DAO increased more than uh, two times. Um, of course, revenue increased and engagement rate went off the roof. Okay, because instead of just rewarding gems or whatever uh, hard or soft currency it is, they started testing and rewarding more, uh, say, appealing things for the users. Um, segmentation. Just in a nutshell, because we can talk about segmentation for a very long time, we're strong believers in segmentation. Again, it leads me to the fact that when you're optimizing IAP, you're implementing all kinds of segmentation, right? You're trying to understand what, what type of users you have in one more minute. Um, so some of the things that we feel that are super important when looking at rewarded ads and segmentation are these three things, right? One is, is it a paying user or a non-paying user? Or can you predict if this is going to be a paying user or a non-paying user? And if you know for a fact that this user will never ever pay, which is a good thing if you can predict it, then of course, take that user and show them rewarded video, monetize whatever you can from that user, giving this amazing retention tool. It's, it's a shame not to do it. The second thing that people also tend not to think about, is this user engaged with the ads or is he not engaged with the ads? And if he's engaged with ads, again, tr you can treat him differently in terms of how many rewarded videos you're showing him. And if he saw that this specific user never ever clicked on rewarded video, maybe it's time for interstitials. There is other ways of monetizing users if you segment them and you understand their, their value or their trends or what they do, right? But it's just a matter of asking yourself those questions and you can segment that. And there's more things you can segment a level above whatever level and so on and so on. That's it. This is the, my summary. The summary um, talks about revenue because we all love revenue and we're trying to optimize and make more revenue with our uh, traffic. Um, here what I did is I kind of listed the things of what revenue, at least from ads, is built off. Right? It's built from impressions times the eCPM. The bulks here in green are bulks that you, as a game developer, can control. Okay? You have control over all the green bulks the red ones, maybe not so much. In some way, you can control them, but let's say for the sake of discussion, you can't. The green ones, you can. You can affect the engagement rate. You can affect the usage rate. You can affect the visibility of the button, the attractiveness, the timing, and so on. These are all things that the developer can, can, can control. It's under his control. And in terms of eCPM, you can control the IPMs, by the way, as installs per thousand. This means wherever you put the video, is the user actually going to go and click on it if it's a branded video or install whatever ad he, he saw? You can affect the eCPMs that you'll generate and how much money you'll make, against implementation, placement, user flow, so on. The user quality for advertisers, you can't always pick. If you can all buy users in tier one countries, cool, but not always. Uh, but that's, again, the message is that you can control 90% of what affects your revenue. And you should. You should track it and analyze it. You gave example, sorry, I forgot the name, but you gave an example of an application or a game, sorry, that's mm. implemented a different new ad spaces and it's raised its revenues by twice or something like mm -hmm. that. 
Could you elaborate a little bit more about that? What, was it, what were the new spaces? Like? Sure. So let, let's talk in general, not specifically on the example, right? So most of the publishers, when they go live, they would game developers, they would probably choose one placement with one reward. Okay, so what else you can do? So there's many, many, many default placements. You can have a traffic driver in the store, in the main page, between levels, when you're out of lives, when you're out of gold, out of coins. The question is, are you actually implementing more? Is it a single placement? So you can have multiple placements in terms of places in the app and multiple currencies, okay? I think there is. I think too many placements is also too much. I from what we see, I would say two to three placements is probably enough. Above three placements, you can maybe bombard your user with too much options, which is always, like if you ask Apple, don't give any options, right? Uh, depends. Um, but that's probably the, the optimal two to three placements. One is definitely too low. Okay, you don't even know. You can't A-B test with one. What's, maybe one additional placement will double your uh, engagement rate. I don't know. Should we increase or decrease our reward for uh, for our user till he playing game? For example, he had uh, 100 levels, so mm -hmm. should we increase reward or we need to decrease it, the amount of reward? So I think the, 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 the answer is that let's first look at the data. If your engagement rate is really, really high and usage rate is way, way high and it actually harms your IAPs, then definitely you should reduce it. Okay? The question is if that's the matter. If the case is you have 4% engagement rate, then probably you should increase it because the number that you're rewarding is not incentivizing the users to watch videos, right? So this all depends on the situation. Yeah, it depends on the situation. It's like, um, you know, it's like setting up the prices for IAP packages, right? You need to kind of A-B test it and try it. And the beauty is that there's many, many platforms out there that actually give you all the matrix. So you can A-B test, you can try this placement and this placement, this reward, a smaller, bigger reward, and see the effect on, and, and again, the effect is not just on the placement of the video. The effect is on the entire economy, IAP, retention, churn, everything. Okay, that's kind of the, that's the, the whole, uh, I would say, uh, you know, uh, professionalism around it when you're trying to use those kind of tools. Thank you. Sure. Cool. Thank you. Here.